Final Fight is back in OCS form. It's Amigos, everything Amiga. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. Today, Aaron, we're talking about Final Fight. Yes, sir. You know, there's, a big, there's a big fight coming up uh, before too long that the world is sort of ablaze with discussion about. It's Iron Mike. He's coming back to the ring. Uh, yes, he's sir. He's fighting against uh, um, is one of the Paul boys. I believe Which one it's, is it? I believe it's Ron Paul. I think he's Ron taking Ron. Paul. That's a fight worth watching. <laughs> or it could so, be Rand. It's one of the two. <laughs> Rand Paul is a, is a tomato can. We know that from the incident that happened a couple that's, of years ago. That's a good point. That's a valid point there. Uh, um, it's, it, is it Jake that he's fighting? I think so, because Logan is a wrestler, right? That's right. Yeah. So Jake's Jake Paul, the, is the boxer. Jake Paul. And, um, and you, you have seen him fight before in both UFC and boxing, right? Who? Jake Paul. No, he's he's never fought in UFC. He just would get he would boxing. get murdered. Yeah, he's okay. just he's he's beat up UFC guys in boxing, mm-hmm. but that's not the same. Not even close. That's sort of his speciality. You know, he beats up non boxers, p- boxers that are over the hill, boxers that never were. And the only actual boxer you ever fought beat him. Now, the, here's the thing about Jake. I'm going to put him over. He's a natural athlete. He's a big guy. He's uh trains hard. Uh, he gets real trainers. He's not just a, he's not there ham and egging it. He actually works hard. Uh, and he's fighting a guy who is how old is Tyson now? Fifty six or something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's he's closer to sixty than fifty. All right. And so, what do we see here? I mean, we've seen. Uh, you're right. The world is ablaze. And this is certainly Mike's final fight. I would assume uh, to just to stay in line with the theme. Mm-hmm. But. Um, Listen, everyone on Earth would love to see him go in there and and maul this geek. Okay, however, um, the guy's fifty six years old or fifty, however old he is. Paul is in his prime. Paul is way bigger uh, guy. I've seen a lot of footage of Tyson uh, punching the bag and uh, mm. and whatnot. But again, you're talking about a guy who does have knockout power in in Paul. Uh, so in you know it's. Only Texas would 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 the only their crooked uh, bass backwards commission would even let this fight happen. You're letting a, you're licensing a, a guy that's in his late fifties to fight a giant who's like in his what early thirties. Yeah, I mean it's 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 this is some uh, this is some uh, Japanese pride level stuff uh, with that you, that you're going to let happen. It's dangerous, frankly. What if you what if Paul goes in there and kills this guy? Yeah. I mean, Mike Tyson's not a sweetheart, but I mean, he doesn't. We don't necessarily see him die in the ring, and we also know what can happen when fighters stick around too long. And I mean, and it happens over and over, and they get punch drunk, and then the rest of their lives they're you know drinking through a straw, and they're all messed up. Mm-hmm. We don't want that. Uh, so because Tyson is a, um, he's making a lot of money, and he's got a lot of endorsements. He's got his own podcast. In his own line of everything, so I mean, he's he doesn't need to do this. I'm assuming they drove a dump truck full of money up to his house boat or several. Well, this is this is like when Terry Funk wrestled alone. He did it for pride. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. Terry Funk wrestled till he was older than Mike Tyson, for starters. And secondly, uh, Terry Funk is in a fake sport. They, it's fake. You know, when they actually hit Terry with a chair, they weren't really killing him. That's I mean, true. this is a assuming I mean, if you want to get fights on the up and up, you've got a point. You um, know, now would you say that this is the biggest fight in probably the last 20, 30 years in the world of professional boxing? No, no, not thirty. No, 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 no. It's the biggest. See, this isn't a fight. This is one of those sideshow type affairs. You know, I mean, it's not a. It's an exhibit. Number one, it is an exhibition. They what does that even, even call mean, it a, though? When they say an, it's an exhibition, it's not. I believe it means it's not judged. Really, it, it limits the it limits the amount of rounds. Uh, it, I think it gives the ref additional powers mm. uh, to end the fight, stuff like that. Uh, and the uh, truth of the matter is, uh, in a real fight, I doubt they could get licensed, even in Texas, even in Indiana. I don't because I just. 
the the and the reason is if a guy goes out and gets killed, then they're held responsible for his death. Mm. Even the even the screwiest commissions don't want guys to die. Right. And there's a possibility of death in a, in a fight like this. Mm-hmm. This is a huge man pummeling an elderly man. Yeah. yeah. You know, so if you look at it in that aspect, uh, it's, it's, listen, am I going to watch it? Sure. Am I going to pay uh, $100 to watch it? Heck no. No way. No. But I'll catch it on the flip side, you know. Mm. Uh, but should it happen? Probably not. I used to watch a lot of like weird freak show stuff in Japan. Mm-hmm. They had like a they had a tournament called the uh, it was a it was a tournament David and Goliath tournament where they had little guys matched up with huge giants. That was the tournament. Well, they like <laughs> guess what? These huge guys are like seven foot tall. The little guys are like five two. They just I mean, throw them out ludicrous. of the ring. That's the end. Yeah. You know this was it. This was MMA. This was even wrestling. Mm. And so I mean. It, it, to lie, or like they have a sumo wrestler fight a guy that's that's five one and weighs a buck and a quarter, you know. Mm-hmm. But they got away with that because in Japan it's like um, bizarre award. Anything goes over there. In America, we're supposed to look out for the athletes' well being. Mm, yeah, well, allegedly. Speaking of, speaking of freak show stuff out of Japan, let's talk about final fight. <laughs> You know, we don't we don't often play games that are that were released the year that we're recording the show. This happens this is one of the rare times that's happened, Bo. It's right. only happened a bunch or twice. You're right. And this is this is Final Fight Enhanced. Uh this just was released this year. And I guess before we get into Final Fight Enhanced, we should let's take a step back, Bo, back in time just for a moment. Uh there was a game released uh way back in 1989, and it was called Final Fight, mm-hmm. a beat 'em up from Capcom, published and developed by Capcom, uh, and it sort of redefined uh, what a beat 'em up was in a lot of ways. Big, so if beautiful. You were, if, if you were going to chart sort of the the trajectory of the beat 'em up as found in the arcades, what do you think the original arcade beat 'em up was? A lot of people would say Double Dragon, but do you think that there's there's a game that predates Double Dragon? There probably is. There, I, and the thing is, I, I can't. I'm not an expert in beat 'em up category. Dr- Double Dragon was way back. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, I can't. In my mind, I can't keep straight what came first. But I know it was one of the first ones. And it was. I would say it was sort of the pioneer. Mm-hmm. But I would say if you if you went down the line, this was this is the next one that is next like a bullet point. Yeah. Because yeah. this had. Um, this had a lot of things that are that pretty much set the standard in the way these things are going to go. You know, you're going to pick your character. It's got big, beautiful graphics. It's got the health bars. That everything is set up like we. I mean, really, to this day, you still see the setup is basically the same. Mm-hmm. Even in modern games, even the Double Dragon series pretty much did the same thing. And they sort of adapted to this series in a lot of ways. And this this was a uh, to say this was a hit for Capcom. Would be a, an understatement. It was a massive hit. It was uh, just unbelievably popular, uh, and uh, made them buckets of cash. I remember playing this for the very first time at the Billy Bob's in Huntington with Brent. We beat the game one day at Billy Bob's, and we couldn't believe the graphics and the sound. It just had everything. But do you, you remember? Do you, first... do you remember uh, just a rough estimate of how much money you spent to beat the game? How many quarters <sighs> it took? Well, I believe we were at a birthday party, and so mm-hmm. we had like a ton of credit. You know, they give you a ton oh, yeah. of like uh, quarters. Of tokens oh, there's no way we would have beat it on our own dime. Mm-hmm. In '89, when this came out, I hate to say it's this year I graduated high school, and so that would have put Brent probably in middle school, I guess, mm-hmm. at the time. Plenty old enough to play this. Uh, do you remember when you saw this, the, the original Final Fight for the first time? Did, yeah. did it leave a mark on I you? I do. I do. I remember exactly where it was. It was at the old hills in Taze Valley. Remember the old hills? <laughs> yeah. Uh, now the hills is a target, um, and uh, but yeah, they had they had a little entrance section, a little breezeway that separated the the main entrance from the from the store, and they had a couple cabs in there, and that was the first time that I saw Final Fight. Yeah, and, and what did you think? Were you impressed? Oh yeah, I was blown away by it. I'd never seen a game that looked like that before. Uh, the, the the graphics were so big, but 
it moved incredibly fast. Because up until that yeah. point, whenever you see a game that has huge honking sprites, things just kind of chug along. But in this game, this game moves. It moves quick. And it was be- it was beautiful. That beautiful. was the key. Yeah. And so, uh, and of course, this game spawned some, uh, I would call Midland sequels. And Midland ranging toward garbage. Mm. That the uh, Some of the console exclusive stuff is just the, the dirt worst, including the fighting game. But, I mean, this, this I would say without a doubt, Final Fight 1, that's your money, Final Fight. Mm-hmm. So, of course, uh, Final Fight is going to be released on every conceivable console and computer that can handle it. And the Amiga was no exception, Boat. And so in 1991, U.S. Gold, everyone's favorite, the gold standard, U.S. Gold, released a Final Fight for the Amiga. Uh, this was uh, developed by Creative Materials. And uh, Creative Materials, boy, how, can you, how many of the big Creative Materials classics can you remember, Boat? Uh, not a I'm, whole lot. <laughs> I'm looking over there. I'm looking over their efforts. California Days Two, California Games Two, Days of Thunder, which mm-hmm. is widely considered one of the worst games on the Amiga. Uh, the Godfather, it's in here. Street Fighter 2, they did that, which is also considered garbage, because it is. They did the Summer Games 1 and 2, so they had, it was a mixed bag. As long as they stayed in the 8-bit lane, they were okay, but when they tried to swerve out of it, it was a mass calamity yeah. uh, for creative materials. And so I can say, I think I can say without any hesitation, that uh, the original Final Fight for the Amiga was a dud, big dud. Uh, played like we actually, I think we covered it on this show uh, way back, boat, and I don't, mm. and it was no good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say this is like if you look at where this stands in the uh, in the pantheon of big arcade conversions, this is slightly. It's better than Outrun. It's probably better than Street Fighter, but it's still worse. Like everything else, garbage. Well, I've, I've got to, when we get a little bit later on in the in the review, I'll talk about my thoughts because I spent some time. I went back to the Amiga version, spent some time really last week. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So. <clears throat> that was again. That was released in '91, and then everything was quiet for a while. All right, and lo and behold, uh, what comes out is Final Fight Enhanced 2024, uh, created by a fellow named Brick Nash, also known as Prototron. Uh, it's funny. I looked. Uh, <clears throat> I looked on uh, EAB when he announced. I went back to his very announcement of this. Uh, thing here, and he and he writes. It's a very simple post. He says, "I started learning assembly language last summer, so I thought I'd po- uh, post a preview of what I'm doing, which is what he was previewing the game." And so this is early on, and he shows what he's doing. But this was an exercise in learning to uh, to apply assembly language in a game in a game environment. This is what okay. you're looking. This is what you're looking at here. And then, of course, it progressed until he had effectively a completed game, which and. To be fair, uh, this is a this game is built with the backbone and the and the uh, all the various items that were in the original Amiga Final Fight game. So the, when this is called Final Fight Enhanced, that's effectively what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's t- he's attempted to take the original Amiga game and then improve on it in various ways, and we'll talk about h- how he did uh, one way or the other. Uh, this ha- <clears throat> this works on ECS and AGA. Uh, of course, this is free. This requires Kickstart 2 plus 2 megs of chip and half a meg of fast memory. So until you get that rejuvenator, your your five, your 1,000 is out of the loop on this one, Boat. Yeah, well, I can understand it. I will say this. I, will, <laughs> I can't wait till you get that. <laughs> for the 1000 that's gonna be awesome and oh, yeah. we'll be playing crap that no one's ever played on a 1000 before that's true i'm already playing <laughs> crap that nobody's ever played because of the the pasero and so the rejuvenator is going to kick it into high gear very good so boat uh this starts up uh with a lovely uh arcade um it's got the arcade attract mode that comes up it's quite nice uh, it even has the uh, R rated or the the non American version of the game. Mm-hmm. There's there there are a few subtle lady. changes. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the she's in her lacy lacy bra. Mm-hmm. When and so the premise of this uh, is that uh, Mayor Hagar his he's going to clean up this city. The problem is the see the the thugs aren't happy, so they kidnap Hagar's daughter. And they're like, listen, just take the kickbacks they're going to give you, and shut up. Oh, we're going to, like, take care of your daughter, mm-hmm. you know. Hagar's not sitting down for that. It turns oh. out her the daughter's also dating one of his buddies. So we've got a couple tough guys who are angry 
that th this girl's been kidnapped. Plus, we've got a new player on the scene uh, this time around. As they've added a girl character, I think her name's Mako, and she Maki. is a, a Maki. Right, excuse me, Maki. and she's she's from the second uh, Final Fight game. That I mean, I think I've played the second one, but I don't recall much about it. Uh, so, what do you think about this opening boat? With I mean, and and the way everything flowed, well, were you happy with this? Yeah, I didn't realize until we were covering this game that there was a a, a, a different, a slightly altered introduction. In the U.S. version versus the Japanese version. Of course, the Japanese yeah. version, as it always is, is better. And I'm glad that they, <laughs> they restored that back in there. It's sexy Final Fight. That's right. And then they added, of course, they added all of Maki's stuff uh, in there, too. And, uh, yeah, I guess uh, originally I think Cody is the daughter's – Jessica, I think, is her name – her her boyfriend, and then Guy, he's just sort of a, another guy. He's like Cody's buddy that's along for the ride. That's right. So uh, anyone um, that dresses like Guy, he's ready to go. Yeah. He's got the gi on and stuff, so he's ready. To, he's ready to whoop a butt. You know, it's, um, it's interesting. Th th do you know if this came out after the original Street Fighter, or did this come out before that? You know, I think, I think this came out before. Street Fighter. Let's look and see. You talk about Street Fighter One Street or Two? Street Fighter One. I well, hmm, I'm gonna look right now on the fly. So while I'm looking this up, boat. Uh, I mean, the music, the visuals. Were you were you down with the clown with all this stuff? Yeah, I mean, uh, the I think the the music was uh, rewritten from the ground up. Uh, for this release, which was cool, uh, it's not. I mean, the the that's the at least the opening theme is identical to the original. That's for, from what I could tell because I well, went back and looked at the, the, the music. in game music is totally different. So, yeah. um, the, I I don't know what I don't know what to tell you about that. And also, it, the in game music. So it says Street Fighter is, One came out mm -hmm. in eighty seven. Okay, so this is on after, my birthday. Yeah, this is <laughs> after. Street Fighter One. So anyway, uh, the the music in this is uh, is I would say it's a step up from uh, from the arcade version, um, but it's nowhere near as good as say you know the classic beat 'em up soundtrack of something like Streets of Rage. Oh n no, no, I agree with you on that. But I mean, uh, Streets of Rage came down the pike a while a, a little bit later. But, but like, yeah, but also... I mean they they rewrote the music. Some Amiga guy wrote the music in this game. This is not yeah, the same good. music that's in the the arcade game. By the way, just for the record, Street Fighter Two also uh, came out after this, so this really was the one that kind of because this has got the life force that sort of looked like Street Fighter Two and stuff. So this really was the one that sort of kicked it down the line. I, yeah, I had to look yeah. Well, that that's why I, I think that this is this game was a huge. Uh, I think I'd read somewhere in the history of Street Fighter Two that this game played a big part. You know, the the guys. Uh, they saw this and they're like, "All right, well, we know what we're doing when we're doing Street Fighter Two. We're going to put in these life bars, and it's going to be great." So it's. I'll tell you something. Me and my brother talked about when we first played this was the life bar system they put in this was so good. I told Brent, I was like, you know, they could use this for any sort of theme, mm -hmm. and they ultimately did in a lot mm -hmm. because then it's the beat of us. So you got your X Men, your Turtles, the you know all that right. stuff. It was all. You know, but I, but w this was the first time we really saw this. Is like, okay, now we got something even more than uh, than Double Dragon. So again, you've got the final fight, you've got the plot, you've got the theme. So now you get down to the nitty gritty, which is the gameplay. And this is really where the original uh, Street or uh, Final Fight for the Amiga sort of fell down. Mm -hmm. It looked okay. I mean, you're gonna get you're gonna get uh, graphics color wise that are a notch below. The arcade or your favorite console. Uh, however, I thought the palette chosen here and the 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 way it all looks, I thought that was a, that was a big improvement. And I also liked, I mean, you could tell right away. And I will say, me and Bo played this for the first time uh, at uh, uh, Amigathon. Uh, right when you grab hold of this, you know right away that it's a it plays much better than the original. Yeah. Uh, it's it's smoother. I mean, it feels like you're controlling a character better. The other game feels like the controls, it's almost like you're controlling like a doll or something. It, just, mm -hmm. it moves real g goofy, not smoothly. And they've done a good job of... of Laying down the controls, this you've got you've got punch, kick, and then if you hit both buttons, you'll get your special move, and it works fine. Uh, the uh, um, I believe most of the time I played the the new character, 
Uh, and she she sort of got on like she sort of got on guys gee, except but she's a but you know it's a sexy version, right? And, but all these people play pretty well. Did what did you think of the way this felt when you picked it up and got into a boat? Well, you know, all the characters are more or less the same in terms of like the damage they do. Nobody's I don't, nobody's ultra powerful and slow. It's not like a Street Fighter Two type thing. But yeah. I do enjoy the different styles. For example, when you play as Guy, he does this like back fist sort of you know attack as his main attack. Cody's got the straight in jab. So and um. I, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of variation in in the game. Um, yeah, this game, the the big difference in the uh, in between this game and the Amiga original uh, is, of course, this was a design for two two buttons, so two button sticks. So that's that's obviously advantageous, but also. The enemy placement in the original game was very haphazard. Um, in this game, what the designers did was they looked at the where the enemies were placed in the arcade game, and they they based their enemy placement off that. In the in the uh, in the Amiga original, I don't know if it was an attempt to make the game more challenging so that you wouldn't be able to beat it as easily, but the enemies just come fast and furious all the time, straight out of the gate. Uh, and it, it makes the game super, super challenging considering, like you said, the controls are, are a little bit janky at best, uh, and unresponsive. So I was really impressed that the color palette didn't bother me in this game because this is kind of a gritty, uh, you know, urban wasteland metro city. Uh, and so you, everything doesn't have to be super cartoony and vibrant. Uh, having the muted palette I thought was fine. Yeah, I think they did a good job. I mean, especially given what they had to work with. Mm -hmm. I thought I think it looks quite nice. You know, <clears throat> one of the things uh, one of the things that was very popular in the arcade about this game is that you could pick up a multitude of weapons in this and, and you could pick up swords and knives and uh, all sorts of things. This gives you a taste of that. Uh, there are certain certain areas where you could pick up a pipe for example, but there are uh, there are no swords. Uh, there's a lot of there's just little things missing in areas that you would normally pick up. Uh, and I again, I think a part of that is the fact you've got to remember this is sort of built on the backbone of another game, mm -hmm. and so I think some of the limitations are pretty much uh, down to the fact that they this wasn't in the that wasn't in the original version of the game. Yeah. Uh, but it you know I, and I you know having played this on other systems. You know, most systems give up a little bit, and I think Boat. Now, strike me if I'm wrong here, Boat. This was released on the uh, on the Super Nintendo back in the day with only one. It only had one player, wasn't that? As I that's, recall, wasn't that, this that, that one? That's correct. It only had one player, and uh, and it was a, it was actually a very early release for the Super Nintendo. It was was one? It was part of the the first year of launches of, of launch games. So this came out in '91 for the Super Nintendo too. Uh, it plays. I would say it plays a little bit worse than this game. There's a little bit more slowdown. The colors are better, of course. The soundtrack is insane because it's, you know, the Super Nintendo <laughs> has a very unique sound chip. It's yeah. got like these it, the, these synth sounds that are kind of like the womp, womp, womp. You know, it just, it doesn't really fit <laughs> yeah. the dark urban <laughs> landscape of Final Fight, although they try and make it. It, it is amusing. If any game was meant for was made for the uh, the FM kind of that that Genesis style like sort of rough edged uh, sound, it, it's a game like this. Uh, but the biggest fault, of course, in Final Fight is that it launched with only a single player. And later on, I believe in 1992, they they rectified that by releasing a game called Final Fight Guy, where yeah. you could play as two players. Uh, but still, yeah, it was that's a, that's 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 unacceptable. For a game like this, because that's where all the fun is—is is teaming up with a buddy. Yeah, and it's—I uh, will say, me and you had a real good time going through it. Yeah, uh, when we played it at an Amigathon, it's fun. It's kind of funny to go back. And you said you played the original, mm -hmm. and I—I I, I played it back in the day, and I had to look at it this week. And you—you you sort of pointed out one of its biggest flaws, and that is the—the the way the enemies fight you. Uh, it's. 
it's weird. It's a weird game where there are stretches of nothing and then swarms of everything. Mm-hmm. And that's and so from a gameplay perspective, they really have improved on that element. But it's not just that. It's just not only does your character move smoother and less. I mean, I don't not just smoother, but just kind of the other ones just sort of shuffled around in a yeah. weird way. These move a little more. It, really, they move more like. I wouldn't say they're exactly like the arcade, but they're more like, say, the Genesis or a console version. They they they're not as smooth as their arcade counterparts, but they still move better than yeah, they used and to. And I mean, even the original arcade game is not the the smoothest thing you've ever seen in your life. You know, yeah. it, it's still an arcade game from from 1989. So I would say it's it's definitely a lot closer to the arcade version than the uh, than than the Amiga version, the original. Sure, I think I think you're dead on there now. Of course, like I mentioned, this thing is missing more than a few things in it. Uh, it uh, aside from the fact that it that it doesn't have all the pickups, doesn't have the bosses in the exact right order. You also the moves are slightly different than they than you would remember from the arcade. Uh, in fact, so there are a couple of moves that are just flat out missing. But I I, I, I assume that's because they weren't in the original. Mm-hmm. I had to go back and try it out. Uh, but I I found overall that uh, that. Uh, there was enough there for me to enjoy myself. We did run into a, at least, I mean, I ran in, did you run into any glitches this week when you were playing this? Cause I oh, ran yeah. into a couple. Like, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that happens. For example, like the timer is sort of, sometimes it runs, sometimes it doesn't run. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's by design or not. Uh, I had some weird graphical glitches happen to me uh, over the course of playing nothing where I, I never had it fully freeze on me. Um, I played for almost, you know, 45 minutes straight on my first go round, uh, yeah. and, and, and had no issues. Um, the, uh, the really the, my big complaints with this game are that, uh, the, they're my main complaints with final fight, you know, that, that you can, you can't get better than the original and the original right. is not a perfect experience. Uh, there's a lot of repetitive enemies. You face the same, you know, five or six enemies over and over and over again. Um, uh, now this game is, I think it's a little bit too easy. Uh, you're able to pretty much play until you get tired. Uh, there's no difficulty select. Um, and, uh, it's, it's just, I, I would have appreciated a difficulty slider uh, and maybe some rewards if you play it on a higher difficulty level. And uh, and again, I also missed because half of the fun in this game is is all of the things that you find to pick up. Uh, in the arcade original, there's money you can find and jewels and stuff like that. And it just kind of it makes the gameplay a little bit less <laughs> monotonous uh, yeah. when you don't know what kind of stuff you're going to be picking up now. And that all that said, I thought that the weapon implementation was great. You're never sure. That's usually one of the things to fall down in, in, a, in a conversion is how well do they do the weapon pickups and stuff like that. But they did them well here. Um, I found this game to be almost like a meditative experience. I put this thing on and I just kind of zoned <laughs> out. It, it, it wasn't particularly challenging. I just mowed through guys. It's sort of like when you play Walker, you know, it's just you, sometimes it's fun to just beat some suckers up. Yeah, I agree. The uh, I I did notice that the bosses are not as difficult in, mm-hmm. in the in the, this version as they are in the arcade. Uh, I mean, really, all of them I thought were much simpler. Uh, from Damn Dawn, uh, and I also uh, thought that you know your the guys aren't as and the, again going back to the Amiga original where it was just like they just were relentlessly on you. These guys act more like in the arcade, like you said, but that does make it quite a bit easier than the original Amiga version, in my opinion. Uh, what did you think, having played both this week? Did you would you say this is a a lot this easier is, than the this original? Is, this is a, this is the easiest beat 'em up I've ever played in my life. <laughs> uh, I mean, on on any system, uh, you can fly through this thing with no problems whatsoever. I only use the punch. Uh, I like I said, I, I played as Cody. And I just I just punched guys and I made my way through it. Like I said, I played for 45 minutes straight without losing a life. The only reason why I stopped is I had to go to the bathroom and I went for the pause button, but my my keyboard was turned upside down. I accidentally hit a F11 and exited WHD load. So <laughs> why was your keyboard upside down, Boat? Well, it's because I was in slug mode on the recliner. And uh, and the keyboard was just resting on my gut. Is, is <laughs> the where old, it goes. Yeah. That's your favorite way to play anymore. 
<laughs> you know, um, I, th- this is available uh, again for free, uh, and it's it's in, it's in disc mode and WHD load mode as well. I want to, you know, I want to talk on something just briefly. The, uh, this game, say what you will about it, all right? And I think it's a, quite an achievement, frankly. I think they took. I think he made something from nothing. If you want the honest truth, I think it's. A, I think he did a good job. And he mentioned that this was a coding exercise. And so when I looked around uh, to research this week, I saw a lot of people giving this guy grief, if you could believe it, I can over believe various it. things. It's the and I'm thinking, my, I'm thinking to myself, no, that happens on there. That happens a lot of places. But the guy is, uh, uh, I mean, for someone who's a quote unquote learning, this is a. I think this is quite good. Yeah, it's, it has some glitches and stuff, but you got to understand what the guy's doing. But when you, and I don't think I have to tell most of our listeners this, but I'm going to say it just because it bugged me, like. My God, don't don't look a gift horse in the mouth for, for Pete's sakes. Maybe I mean, here's uh, this the thing: if this doesn't do it for you, what do you want? You know, <laughs> <laughs> what's going to do it for you if this doesn't do it for you? Because this is great. This is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, we were. How stunned were we when we fired this up at the Amigathon? We couldn't even believe it. Yeah, you know, if only this guy could have a crack it out run, <laughs> we'd be right. laughing. You know. Um, <clears throat> This does, believe it or not, this has been up long enough to get some action on uh, Lim and oh, great. Boat. Uh, the uh, the enhanced version has a 8.13 score, which is very good. And it's funny, the original version of this had like a 5.25. So this mm-hmm. it was quite the raise. It's funny what a little bit of just elbow grease can do. Of course, it, it took, you know, 30 years to, to get for somebody to do it, but still, I call that a win. Of course, this hasn't been reviewed by any uh, formal uh, magazines, but we did have some people in our Discord have a look at this thing. Bud, did you get any action on that? Yeah, man. We'll start things out with Pajaco 6502. He says, it's easy to think that apart from adding Maki from the second game, there isn't much difference to the original port. Having also gone back and compared them both, they are worlds apart in what has been updated. The improved two-button control scheme works really well. The original was just, well, it was one button, so I'll give the developers a pass, but it was dog poop to play with. We now have music and freaking sound effects in-game. Also gone is the low frame rate and terrible flickery mess of sprites. Remaster seems much easier, and you can cheese your way through most of the game. I got fairly far into it with the three continues, and ultimately I had fun, and that is the important thing. Mm. Getting in those gangbang death loops on the original narked me right off. The only very minor annoyances for me were reload time on continues and picking up objects felt too pixel perfect when beating up baddies like they owed you money was extremely loose on the old sprite collision. Okay, the original had to run on the A500 and the remaster needs an upgraded A600, but it's a really solid effort for a lower spec machine than the 1200, so kudos to the developers for choosing that route. A little more work could get this even better, but heck, for a passion project that is free, it's pretty awesome. More of this kind of thing, please, 9 out of 10. Mm. Um, Bumface Poohands writes... Never played Final Fight on the Amiga or otherwise, but what I played of this, I enjoyed. Two-button support on my CD32 pad doesn't seem completely wasted. Music and sound effects at the same time, what's not to like? Things got a bit buggy later on in the game for me. This might be my setup, as the game does state it needs all the 2 meg of chip RAM that is a requirement. 30 years later, and I still never get my head around why chip RAM and fast RAM are so different. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, I'm sure that someone can school you up on that, but yeah, the two, that, that's the one thing you have to have here for the two. But hey, you're, he's right. The uh, the addition of sound effects and music is nice. The fact that you have to have a slightly more advanced Amiga in 2024, I think that's a, a, a okay trade-off boat, yeah. in my opinion. Again, you won't be able to uh, p- purchase this, but it's freely available. So I think uh, the so, easiest place to find it is just search, uh, go, just search for Final Fight Enhanced Indie Retro News, and then go from the Indie Retro News's page to the download link. There you go. Go give this a shot. If you're a beat 'em up fan, if you're a Final Fight fan, or you just want to see what they've changed, I think this is a welcome addition to the Amiga gaming family here in 2024. Well done, sir. Are you a sketchy tech? 
Do you have the right tools for the job? Have there been incidents? Next time, don't try to fix it yourself. Send your broken Amiga to Retro Rewind. Get a full diagnostic, a reasonable estimate, and the peace of mind knowing that your machine is in the hands of real technicians with decades of experience and cutting edge repair equipment. Save 10% off your repair with the promo code AMIGOS10. Thank you to RetroRewind.ca for supporting this episode. Amiga News. All right, Aaron, it's been a busy week in the world of Amiga News. You know, we oh uh, just got done having a long conversation with uh, Kickstart founder Ravi Abbott. Uh, you can go over to AmigaShow.com and uh, book your tickets for 2024 Kickstart on the 29th and 30th of June. It's going down in Nottingham at the Meadow Lane Football Stadium in Nottingham in the UK after party at the Saltbox Bar. I want to give just a little plug because there's been some new additions to the uh, guest speaker list, Aaron. Uh, yeah. In fact, if you just go to AmigaShow.com, we can look I at this it. together. Um, so uh, the great thing about Kickstart is that it is a community first event. Uh, there are tons and tons of talks. There's a community room where you can bring some games and do some trading. Uh, you can, yeah. But in addition to that, there's also a full room of exhibitors, uh, special guests, and performers. Uh, headlining this event are uh, Pete Cannon from N4 Records, uh, charting, uh, chart topping music producer who creates his tunes with the Amiga. You got Stu Cambridge, what else needs to be said? My future uh, uh, roommate or housemate in the Airbnb. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's uh, known for uh, doing the art for Cannon Fodder and Sensible Soccer. You got, You're lucky you liked his games, Boater. He'd be, thank oh, God yeah. they didn't hook you up with a guy from one of the other, one of your arts, yeah, like you're, Psygnosis. Uh, yeah, you're with the bitmaps, Boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, I'm going to bribe Robbie. <laughs> um, and uh, Tony Warner, who uh, is a designer, he designed Beneath a Steel Sky, Aaron. So how cool is oh, that? Oh, yeah. And Lure of the Temptress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, in addition to that, we've got some great performers at the after party. Uh, we got uh, Pete Cannon, Hoffman, David Wise, and Vogue Renege. So uh, yeah. listen, this play, this is going to be great. Uh, head on over, I, like I said, to AmigaShow.com. Get your tickets now uh, and uh, join me and a bunch of the Amigos. It's going to be happening. Uh, it's 92 days away, so get on there. Look, at Trevor Dickinson's going to be there, Bo. Oh, yeah, yeah cool. I can't wait. I'm going to try out one of those new boards. I'm sure he's going to have one with him. Mr. Pleasance is going to be there. Mm -hmm. That'll be nice. Yeah. So like all the all the usual suspects and a whole slew of new new blood. It should be it should be a good time, Boat. Rabbi's really put something special together over there. I'd love to get over this sometime myself. So I know you're going to have a good time, Boat. Well, I wanted you know Rabbi was telling me about some of the uh, some of the vendors that are going to be there, and there were places that I'd never heard of before. Uh, so I, I thought I'd list one of them: RetroEasy.com. Uh, yeah. check out some of the stuff that they've got here. If you are in the UK and, uh, you are on the hunt for, uh, you know, various upgrades for your Amiga, you know, overseas ex uh, shipping these days from, you know, of course we really want you to go to retro rewind.ca, but, uh, shipping is prohibitive as they say, uh, to send things across the pond sometimes. Why not get a grease weasel, a quad ROM switcher? Uh, you know, all the things you need to make your Amiga sing. Um, Retro EZ is, uh, I mean, I was, I, I looked at stuff that I just never seen before, especially a lot of this. You know, I'll tell you what's hot these days, Aaron. It's the old face plates and back plates. When you were hot and heavy in the, in the PC scene, when you and the chud were yucking it up in Huntington, how yeah. often did you upgrade your face plates and in, in your back plates to be, you know, up with the latest fashion? Well, you know, we never did that. And because, really? well, most of them I didn't have a faceplate or a side on my machine. Really? Because no one ever, this is, see, this is a whole generation that's different. 
Mm. Like we weren't from the kit computer era. We were from like the like uh, work on it at home. Like we don't give a crap what it looks like era. Like nobody I knew give a crap about the way their system looked. Mm. So yeah, that's something that's sort of more new than than, mm. than what we were up to. But hey, if that's your cup of tea, more power to you, brother. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I just I, I'd never heard of RetroEasy.com before, and so uh, give them a look if you're in the market for some Amiga stuff. The good um, thing about the uh, these retro computers and the Amiga is like there's there's tons of people selling this stuff, and it's not like they all carry the same stuff. Right. One guy's got some stuff, some other guy's got other stuff. Plenty of room out there for everyone to make a buck and for everyone to get the crap they're looking for. Boat. Yeah. Speaking of crap you need in your life, Aaron, I am proud to be the first to announce on Amigos. The uh, one and only David Pleasance has launched his own line of apparel. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I need a new track suit. You know, you're wearing, you're wearing the tiger print one out that we wore last year for Coco Fest. That's Beth. true. And so it's time to invest in something new. Why not get a Mr. Pleasance authored uh, track suit, proud to be an Amigaholic, it's got pictures of various Amigas, both on the uh, on the hoodie itself and also in sort of the crotchal region of the pants. Well, on the <laughs> inner hip, the crotchal region, that's what you're going to go with? Listen, inner thigh, what do you want me to say? Listen, if we were going to get into the, the, first of all, I have to see what the sizes are here. I don't see us. I'm looking here to see what the size uh, sizing is. Um, these are Asian sizes. That's what always gets me, Bode. Mm, you can get triple mm. XL, so I, I, I'm not. That's a little bit too small for me, an Asian size. Yeah. But if I'm gonna pick, I'd like to see you in the orange, Bode. If I'm honest, I think that's the one I like. I the do most. like the orange color a lot. I've sort of that's that's sort of what I'm transitioning to in a lot of my fashion. I like the price. Thirty five yeah. pounds or your is yeah. it your that's pounds, isn't it? That's pounds. Thirty four yep. thirty four pounds. And then it's another it's another twenty three for shipping. From uh, the uh, eBay's global shipping, it looks like that he's ordered a bunch of these. They are they are in his flat in Peterborough, United Kingdom. I'm not saying that's where Mr. Pleasance lives. This is where his distributor lives, and they will be shipped to you. They come in glorious colors. Uh, you Look can at that kind uh, of dark crimson, and there's the purple, also mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you, you told me your nickname was the Purple Daddy last time we were role playing. So. Oh, it always is. Yeah. You know, listen. In all honesty, I like Amiga branded stuff. Right? We both like jumpsuits. Mm -hmm. I call, and the price is right. Is that my God? That's a, is that the whole outfit for that price? You get the whole outfit. Right? The whole, whole thirty four shebang. pounds for that. Mm -hmm. That's a steal. How yes. much did we pay? We paid like triple that. We did pay. And ours doesn't say Amiga on it anywhere. No, we didn't get. I don't find. I didn't even get a drawstring on my pants. So, <laughs> yeah. Listen, do yourself a favor, one. support Mr. Pleasance, and buy oh, yeah. yourself a proud to be an Amiga Holic tracksuit. I think that's dandy. Good find, Bode. I love that. That's a hat tip to Ravi for pointing that out to me. Yeah. Finally, I wonder if he's gonna Aaron, be selling those at the uh, Kickstarter boat. Any thought any idea you, on that? I guarantee you'll have a clothing rock there. Oh man. Tell him to up those sizes, Boat, when you see him. I will. I will tell him. Now, Aaron, this is from a site called retrosupplies.co.uk, and this is a thing that I'd never seen before. An Amiga 600 to 500 converter. This converts your Amiga 600 to an Amiga 500. Now, Aaron, you're a learned man. Why in the world would you want to do that? That's not actually what it does. It allows you to run an Amiga 600 accelerator. It allows you to test it on an Amiga 500 motherboard. But it so says Amiga it, 600 to Amiga 500 converter. Yeah, but it doesn't actually. It's not converting the 600 to a 500. It's it's allowing you to test uh, the can, the uh, uh, accelerators for a 600 to a 500. I call that it's sort of deceptive. Named. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there goes that talking point. I thought now you that were going to tell if, me about you're gonna, all of the amazing reasons why you'd want to do that. Well, I mean, I'm I'm going to tell you some. If you do that conversion, 600 to 500, bam, you got a numpad right there. It just <laughs> it just it, the it morphs it morphs out. <laughs> that's impressive. That's impressive. I like <laughs> so, it. <laughs> that's the way, that's the way, exactly the way it works, man. You know, boat. 
I know another little thing. It's a happy little thing. It's going down uh, relatively soon. I mean, in terms of the in the way you look at the universe, I guess. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's the Boat Fest, brother. Boat Fest 2024. I know you're too humble, a man, to bring this up. You're t- you're too humble, but I'll bring it up for you because your humbleness is what makes this event go, and your your spirit of citizenship and camaraderie of what power Boat Fest 2024, and it's coming. It's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, June 14th, 15th, and 16th, in beautiful, scenic, historic, mm. the re- former railroad town of Hurricane or Hurricane, if you will, West Virginia, uh, and it's all going down. And guess what? You could just think to yourself, man, I could go to this thing. There's going to be a bunch of retro computers there. There's going to be a bunch of uh, enthusiasts there. They're going to be playing with these computers and doing things I've never seen before. I'm going to be seeing computers I've never even dreamed of seeing. They didn't know existed. And certainly uh, the largest and most uh, eccentric computer collection in the history of West Virginia. You're going to see all that stuff. Are you going to see live shows? Sure you are. But you're also going to see... John Boat of Carshaw, are they live? He'll be signing autographs. He'll be shaking hands. He'll be kissing babies. He'll be doing everything you need to make you a happy boy. Tell him, Boat. You know, this year is going to be the first year of Boat Fest. We couldn't believe it. It happened. We couldn't believe second it didn't year- explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The second year of Boat Fest, we were sort of still finding our feet. This year, everything is coming together. We've got a perfect event space it's called the social event space it's the former site of a dry cleaners so imagine it's huge. That, yeah it's a huge huge massive room it's like, like a mi- miniature warehouse uh and uh and so we're gonna have plenty of table space uh if you buy a ticket uh and you want to bring your own setup we have people that are bringing a conceivable retro computer that you can imagine everything from the new amiga the x5000 that level lord brings every year we're going to have 48K Ram, who brought his BBC Micro Master Edition last year. He's got a bunch of fun things. And then we even heard from a guy, a local fellow, who's got Heathkit computers that he's thinking about bringing down. So yeah. this is going to be a, no matter what kind of a retro you are into, you're going to find your, 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 you can scratch that itch at Boat Fest. But we're also going to have a featured table that's going to have all kinds of wacky antics on it, such as, tell us about the new game that you just purchased for the featured table, Aaron. Well, you know, I wish I'd brought it down. It's sitting right up here behind me. The uh, uh, we've, got a, we've got a thing this year that we're going to try out called the featured table. About every hour, every two hours, we're going to just change up what's on it. And so one of the things me and Bo really enjoyed, and we had a really fun video a couple years ago making it, was playing a game on the Odyssey 2 that's a combination of video game and board game. It's called Quest for the Rings. Mm-hmm. And the concept of that, it was you would think to yourself, man, no one's doing this. It was almost exclusive to the Odyssey. They had three of these things. But I had heard years ago that the C64 or the Apple or, or Atari had one as well. And I managed to procure a copy of this game Ooh. and had it sent here. It's, it's all about drilling for oil. And I've got a, I mean, the, I'll tell you, the copy I got is pristine. And so we're going to sit down and we're going to try out these board uh, games. I mean, and this is something, unless you have an Odyssey 2 and a TV that'll run it, and you've got the uh, the game, you're never going to get to do this. Or if you same thing with the C64 game, you're never going to get to play these things anywhere else without a lot of effort. We're going to set it up. We're going to have it ready to go. Uh, do you want to try your hand at some, uh, I don't know, electric football? We're going to have one there. If you want to try your hand at this bizarre, weird soccer game, Subutica, we're going to have it there. We're going to have something going on every couple of hours for the entire weekend uh, just so you can have something different to do. We're going to film it uh, so people can see what we're up to. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And that's just on top of the... I mean, listen, you've got free reign here to go to any computers you want. The people are usually there that own the computers. They'll give you the guided tour. Everyone's super friendly. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And we're not even talking about stuff like the big auction, which we've got coming up, which was a huge success last year. Plus, we go on little dinner trips. Uh, this year, we're going to be going to the restaurant that Boat and his wife own. We're looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a friendly no pressure environment where everyone's chill. Some people just show up and don't know who anyone is, and that's okay. Everyone just like a big melting pot in the boat. That's right. That's right. So you can get your tickets today. It's only thirty bucks for the whole weekend. 
Boatfest.info. Very good, Boat. It's going to be a lot of fun, Boat. What do we got coming up next week on the show, Aaron? You ready to find out? It's the F-17 Challenge. Now, some of you may be confused. Some of you may be saying, hey, wait a minute, uh, dummy. Didn't you say that was coming up this week? Well, I was wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> everyone makes mistakes, Bert. So I'm looking that, forward that's to coming playing up this, this Team 17 racing game. I've never, I've never checked this out. I'm, I'm anxious to see what the Worms guys are bringing to the racing table. I can't tell if you're excited or apprehensive, Boat. A little of both. It's always the same <laughs> every week. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks, as always, for listening. Patreon.com slash Amigos Podcast if you want to support us. We'll see you next week. And until then, adios. adios. Amigos is made possible by contributions from listeners like you. Patreon supporters help choose the games we play, receive exclusive magnets, and get access to the Amigos Retro Gaming Discord server. Visit patreon.com slash amigos podcast if you'd like to support the show and join our community.